this man will cause the people to arise in rebellion against King Herod. They'll dethrone Herod and make Jesus their king. <laughs> king of Israel. Can you blame them? Whose side are you on? Oh, I have a mind of my own. You're not supposed to use it. You were supposed to spy out all that Jesus does and report it to King Herod. You saw what happened here today, all of it, the same as I did. And you must admit that this man Jesus has some sort of power no one else possesses. All day he has been healing the sick and ailing. Just a moment ago you saw him take five loaves and two fish, five small loaves of bread and two small fishes, and feed this vast multitude. Now how? Nah, sleight of hand. Trickery! Oh, you know that's not true. He used some sort of real power. And whatever the power and wherever it came from, he used it wisely. All day he healed people, and then tonight was the crowning act of wisdom that really impressed the people. Why? Because it benefited them, everyone, even you and me. The bread and the fish did have a flavor, the like of which I had never before tasted. See? Power! That's what did it, and wisdom. And then what did he do to impress the people further? He gathered up what was left, twelve baskets full, and then he distributed those baskets full to every man here to take home with them. Well, what's so wise about that? Well, people are here from near and far. All at home will get a taste of the food provided here by a miracle of Jesus. They will also hear the entire story of what happened. So it's natural that they should want such a powerful man to be their king. I would, so would you. We'd better rush back and report this to the king. He will surely do something about it. Oh, there seems to be some sort of disturbance over there. Let's go see what it is. Jesus' own disciples are right in the middle of the discussion. Now, just a minute. Just a minute. We are accomplishing nothing. Let him who has anything important to say, say it in an orderly manner. Now, you. I tell you, he is the long-looked-for deliverer, spoken of by the prophets of old as sitting on the throne of David. As king, he will make Israel an earthly paradise, a land flowing with milk and honey. He can, he, he can break the power of the hated Romans and deliver Israel and Jerusalem from their dominion. He can heal the soldiers who are wounded in battle. Now, what other king can do that? He can even supply whole armies with food. We will conquer all nations. We are Jesus as king. We will have peace and prosperity. With his power, we will rule the world. Oh, accomplishes nothing. Let us have action. Let us go at say, once. Say, say, to... aren't you one of Jesus' closest disciples? You might say that. Well, yes, I am Peter. you, above all people, know why Jesus is here. To relieve us from the power of Rome and to sit on David's throne as our king. Why doesn't he go ahead and do it? Pro proclaim himself king of Israel. Well, uh, the modesty of Jesus forces him to refuse to declare himself king. Well, then we'll do it for him. We will take him by force and crown him king. Yes! Crown him! Peter! James! John! All of you, come hither. We'll be right back. Yes, master. I bid you take the boat and return at once to Capernaum. All of you. I shall remain here and dismiss the people. But, master, we should remain here with thee. The people are going to crown you king, king of Israel, to sit upon the throne of David, and we, thy disciples, Peter, should... Peter, go to the boat, all of you. Cross over the sea to Capernaum, immediately. So impatient. Peter. It's getting late, almost dark. If he doesn't come pretty soon, we're going to have to cast off without him. That, my dear Peter, is exactly what he told us to do. Ah, I know. And we shouldn't have been so easily persuaded. He should have permitted us to crown him king. If we had been more persistent, he might have. There is a lot of opposition from the leaders and rulers. Well, it's time that they recognize that Jesus is the rightful heir to the throne of David. It's time they're forced to honor him as one who comes clothed with the authority of God. It's time to cast off if we're going to reach Capernaum before dark. All right, Matthew. things I would like to know. Why doesn't Jesus assert his authority and become king? Yes, and why didn't he save John the Baptist from such a violent and shameful death? Some people think we're followers of a false prophet. 
Is this always going to be so? Is it possible? But could it be that Jesus is an imposter, as the Pharisees say he is? Oh, a violent storm. We're not prepared for it. We were too busy complaining about the master. Oh, forget it now. Let's get busy and turn this boat into the wind and row. Or we'll have too much water and sink. I mean, it's all your fault, Peter. You started the argument. Forget it and row. Row, I said. We're lost. The boat's about to sink. The wind grows stronger and the waves higher. It's the fourth watch. We've rowed and worked long and hard, but it's no use. We're doomed. Oh, if Jesus were only here, he would save us. No, Peter. We've been complaining about the master. We are not worthy of his salvation. Yes, you're right, John. Oh, wait. That we... An apparition. What? A ghostly light, a form in the midst of the light, walking on the water. It's, oh. it's not an apparition. It, it's real. It is the master. The master. The master. Oh, oh, help us, master. Help, help us. Help us, oh, master. Oh, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water. Come, Peter. Oh, no, Peter is walking on, on the water. Help me, master. I'm sinking. Give me your hand, Peter. I shall lift you up. You began to sink, Peter, when you took your eyes off your Savior. Now we shall walk together to the boat. 